Given the president's sagging poll numbers and the fact that he is currently placing behind any Republican opponent, has there been any talk in this White House about a change in strategy or staffing going forward in reflection of those numbers that continue to show him underwater? No. Should we be anticipating any departures from either cabinet officials or other senior? Look, I can't speak to people's personal decisions. A reporter asking White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre if President Biden is considering a staff shakeup since his polling numbers are so low. Her response, terse and not expansive at all, but can't blame her on that one. Former White House Deputy Chief of Staff Carl Rove joins us now. Carl, would Morning, a girl. personnel change on the staff level make a difference here? Well, uh, if the personnel is the guy who sits behind the oval uh, in the Oval Office behind the Roosevelt desk, perhaps. But but look, uh, there are problems that they have in terms of their organization. Uh, take a look, for example, compare this White House to the White House in 2011. Chief of Staff was uh, Bill Daley. He knew politics. The White House senior advisor. Uh, and David Axelrod had left to go over to the campaign. The campaign had a, a skilled operative who'd been involved in the 2008 Obama campaign, Jim Messina, and had a long track record of being involved in electoral campaigns. Look at this White House. Anita Dunn is inside the White House, but who is the close confidant of the president who's over at the campaign? The campaign manager has never run a campaign. Uh, who's the chairman of the Democratic National Committee? It's uh, uh, Jaime Harrison, who spent $110 million and lost by a huge margin in South Carolina to, to uh, Senator Scott uh, in, in his reelection. So, you know, the team is not the A team. And the White House is, in my opinion, not well organized for, the, for what, what, what's coming. The, the chief of staff has no political involvement. Well, that's fine. Uh, but, but the, the, you know, Anita Dunn is the only pro in this, in this, uh, in this galaxy of people who are responsible for getting the president she reelected. Back to 2009 with President Obama. A couple things here. Let's go back to our Fox polling, Carl. I know you got a whiteboard, so uh, let's get on with it. We had Biden and Trump. Trump up four. Uh, Biden to Santa. So Santa up five. Biden Haley. Haley up a. 11. And then we have, stand by, the job performance disapproval number from mid November is 59%. Does that jive with what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we, look, we got confirmation. Take a look. These are the Fox and the Marquette Law School, pretty good poll, Marquette Law School. Trump up four over Biden in Fox, up four in Marquette. DeSantis up five in Fox, up two in Marquette, and Haley up 11 in Fox and up 10 in Marquette. Uh, the White House has got plenty of confirmation. Those terrible approval ratings are being reflected in being behind in the presidential race. And, and that's, you know, you start out behind, but being double digits behind somebody whom the American people know very little about, Nikki Haley, that's a real problem for this White House. Hard to see how they're going to dig their way out of it. Any president will want a Congress that reflects his party, his or her party. And these, this is a map here of five Senate seats that are currently held by Democrats that might flip to Republicans in 2024. West Virginia, Montana, Ohio, Arizona, Pennsylvania. How are things going in those states for Republicans? Well, first, I'd add one more on to that list, six, uh, make it six, which is Nevada, uh, because it's trending slightly Republican. And look, the Democrats have got a real problem, particularly in the three states, Montana, o Ohio, and West Virginia, that were won by the Republicans in the 2020 election and the 2016 election. And uh, as a result, our, 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 the, those Democrats are going to have big uh, targets painted on their backs because the Republicans have got the upper hand. But you're right. Uh, the, those three are the Republican best. We got primaries in in a primary in Ohio. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see who the nominee is there. But it looks like we're going to have good nominees in both West Virginia and Montana. Win those two and hold what we got. And you flip the Senate to 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 a 51 49 and and you're right we've got other shots in Arizona particularly if it's a three way race we got a shot in Michigan we got a shot in Nevada uh, we got a great shot in Pennsylvania with Dave McCormick, who's re received the unanimous endorsement of the Republican Party of that state and is backed by the Senatorial Campaign Committee. So the Republicans are going to be on the offense in the Senate and have a, have a map that's very favorable to them. 
Think about all of those states, Arizona, Nevada, mm -hmm. Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Those were narrow Biden wins in the case of, of Arizona, less than a percent. In the case of Nevada, 2%, uh, two, less than 2% in Pennsylvania, slightly more than that in Michigan. But all four of them could potentially be in, in, uh, in play uh, if the Republicans nominate a good candidate who runs a good campaign. Got it. Um, we will have no more time to talk about this. <laughs> That's uh, sarcasm. <laughs> we will talk about this at night. Oh, we've Great got to have a lot you, brother. of time. Thanks, Endlessly. Carl. Live in Austin. Thank you, Sarah. Nice to see you. And if you, couldn't, if yep, you can't get enough of Carl Rove and politics, and who could? Uh, I had him on Perino on Politics uh -huh. yesterday. That was the podcast guest. Uh, it's available now at foxnewspodcast.com. Uh, you can find out what he's really paying attention to this year. And it has something to do with third parties. Yes, yes, and that was a good one. That was a good one. And, and the Super Tuesday Showdown, which will be for yeah, real, super, right? Super Mega Tuesday. Check it out, right. Ten I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.